please welcome onto the stage um, as she leads us, Naledi Chirwa. Sanvan and Foot. And then Sean. Is it right, girls? Is it right, boys? Uh, my name is Naledi Chirwa. And, you know, when I got that invite, I was like, um, no. Uh, but I didn't type that no. I was like, we have to impose ourselves in all spaces, um, you know, and find expression everywhere, especially as, as black women, as black girls. And, and that's why I'm here. And thank you so much for pulling through. Um, so here goes. It's 2015 in July, not so long after my, my 22nd birthday. And I haven't had my period. Ha. So I'm thinking. Lansarane. Lansarane. Guna I feel on a spiritual level. Ah, Ikel, Ipirot, Aiko, ne? How? No, but the thing is, I'm a reason. I mean, I'm doing my honors in trauma. And, you know, I'm exhausted. Fine, I have sex, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> and he calls Nayo ETA girl. If this is Nayo ETA girl, ne? And I'm thinking, no, maybe that's that. And then early August, Hayini Kais. He brought a easy. Hakimen, Sikibatu. I shop and then I tell the bay at the time, he was the bay at the time. I tell him, we have a situation, chief. And the woman says, what is this situation? Now I pay for you know, now politics, like at here, you go to clicks there. I'm like, yes, yes, can you imagine? I will go to that aisle valley and I'm a pregnancy test. We grab, we grab two, because I wanted to be sure. We grab two, we go back to, I'm staying at Rez, at Hayes Yerika, at the University of Pretoria, no? And the assimilation to whiteness is delicious. I mean, we eat free food and stuff. And even though we're activating the space, I mean, whiteness is nice. We must not lie to each other about that. <laughs> we go to test there. Because I will not feel this trauma alone, right? Because somebody told me, no, you know already, if that's the situation, you will know. Ne? And then I searched my heart of hearts and I was like, ah, it's the situation. So now to confirm the situation, I know, what is this situation that we got ourselves into? Ne? I think again, we check. It didn't take long, I think it was like 10 seconds. I did two stripes. Okay. Oh, it's not the end of the world. Ne? So let's try the other one. I need Tanas availing Tanas and I'm Kunukulu. Come on. We can settle this. You know? <laughs> Maybe I can do my honors for two years instead of one. I don't know. Like academic exclusion, at least. You know, historical debt, exclusion, pregnancy, Aini. <laughs> I see QBS2, Valley City Strip. And the peak is there, guys. I'm hoping maybe at least the peak is at, you know, I'm not coming. No, EP, Valley, Valley, and you're coming. And this one is quicker, even. We want the hormones, you know, impose themselves even more. They're like, yay, CTC, la. You know, figure it to two stripes. I mean, I get traumatized at that moment. I'm like, there is no fucking way that I'm pregnant. But I'm pregnant. I sharp. No, it pay you want to deny it traumatized, ne? But is I'm more optimistic. We can do this. You know how they are. No, we can do this. We will go through this together, ne? And then I think to myself, okay, let, let's, let's, very, very keyword, let's go through this together. 
Then tomorrow morning I bath and I go home. I go home and literally in 24 hours I was already home to tell my mother the not so good news. I I traumatized. You know, with the I in Kelisha. We want the PhD in a like I you're bringing up a baby, you know. But it girl is positive now, it's no, and it's spiritually girl language. So it's no, it keep an verse. I think it was Isaiah something nine. If we buy pill, girl, it's a child is to be born uh, from the Almighty. Wara wara. I'm going with at least in Hamiga. We are reaching threshold here. Yeah. We are reaching Koram. The meeting can continue, ne? And then we continue. Um, I mean, my honesty, I remember, ne? it's 2015. And I'm an activist already in the University of Pretoria. You know, we're mobilizing, activating the space. And subsequently, what comes out of that is fees must fall. I see fees must fall, uh, I'm four months pregnant around that time, October, when we marched to the union buildings. And I'm there in front, guys. I think I forgot for a moment that I'm pregnant. Ne? I'm walking long distances, you know, mobilizing, hey, you must come tomorrow, uh, calling media, you know, uh, in squabbles, everything, particularly pregnant. The, and in a clue, you're pregnant. I shop, uh, and then we go to, you know, buildings, we go there, we terrorize the police, they terrorize back. Was uh, telling <laughs> a zero percent, ne? So much as the struggle, service must fall. Sit deeper, right? The fees have to fall, because there's no way I'm going to raise a baby and pay back and as fast. <laughs> <laughs> so the fees must fall. Ne? I is Uma Ivele, it is zero, zero percent. City Johnny, we didn't come here for zero percent. We want free education, Chief. I free education is sharing a skit. We go back and we strike, whatever, we get suspended. Now I'm suspended. Making matters worse. You're pregnant, the fees didn't fall, and now you're suspended. Okay, we maneuver the situation. I'm back in the system. Uh, it's 2016. I'm like seven months pregnant. I remember it was not so good because also trauma, you know, makes you forget a lot of things. And then we start, e we continue with the in source uh, workers at the University of Pretoria, security guards, cleaners. Um, those who cook at residences and all of that. I can live I can live I'm still young, and you know there's that fire that's burning, you know, and it hasn't really hit you what you're going through. Fine, you can't afford to to nourish your your cravings uh, as much as you would like to. Uh, like when you eat breakfast as Italy, but when you have boyfriend like Serena Williams, you know, now you eat. Sometimes we share my raised food, you know. I we protest insourcing now, and we win, and we get insourced. And I was even using my pregnancy during the protest. Like the police would come, yeah, hey, we're going to shoot you. Me feeling me pambi. Start with me. How about about traumatize our over body? No, you must, you must, you must go. You must to <laughs> And then the protest, like I was, I was, a, I was a weapon. My pregnant body was a weapon, and. And black women's bodies, besides the fact that we are war zones, we are also weapons, right? And, and I was a weapon in that time and moment, not for myself, but for the people we were fighting for, which is always the case. Like, and then fine, eh, eh, baby, in Sosti, we happy. I give birth in April, on the 4th of April. I remember on this day, it was on the 29th of March, it's time. But no, it's not time. Uh, you're due on the what, 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 what. And I'm like, listen, yeah, this baby wants to come out. And I'm going to take it out. Then we go to the hospital. They put things there to a public hospital, a HF. I think it's HF. Yeah. So now I used to even pray about, you know, giving birth. Because I'm like, yo, yes, I've heard so many horror stories about public hospitals. You know, I've had friends who I grew up with whose babies died because of the negligence. Uh, there's this other girl, but her baby got. I'm brain, 
you know, because the nurse was, I'm delivering a C-section once she was under the stress and they refused her C-section and they were saying, I can't let her she man. And I girl, I mother, the spiritual lady, it's no, let's, let's pray through this uh, crisis of not having money to give birth properly. I said, Tandaze, no, and then my ancestors are pulling through shame. They go there, they're not, they're not nasty to me or anything. They are fine, nasty. They're the nasty I can take. Ne? The warasa, you know, that nasty. And I'll throw a tiny tantrum. I'm public hospital. But still, ne? I find then they, I think I stayed there for like two hours with those machines around my belly. And they said, no, 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 it's not your time. You need to go back home. The fake what not, what not. I'm very disappointed because I was very ready to finally get this thing that I can't carry anymore, you know, to come out and to meet my son, right? And it was not your time to meet the son. And then 1st of April, eh, my mom, because now, oh yes, yes, yes. 1st of April, I suppose that was my due date. 1st of April was my due date. And I prayed against that. I was like, how oh, are well, April Fool's Day? <laughs> I don't want my son to come on April Fool's Day. Yo, guys, you should have seen me. I was literally praying to your young girl, like, yo, come on, I'm so posting April Fool's Day, Facebook, every birthday, my child, ha, ha, ha. Yo, 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 the trauma, you know? I was like, no, not April Fool's Day. It's shy midnight, it's second April, and it's no, uh, the Lord is alive, ne? It's second April, it's third April. Now my mom is panicking, and then fourth April, she went to Bushira's church. She went, <laughs> my mom went to Bushira's church. She got there, she was praying. She came back, she came back with an oil or something. But me, I, I let my mother be, right? Because her feelings matter to me so much. And I understand that we go through, I mean, religion is the opium of the oppressed. And we must let each other go through those modes of healing and you know, sustaining trauma and whatever it is. And so I let my mother do that. So we guys like I'm like yes. And then it was 10 p.m. I me. I me go sleep. Eleven o'clock. This is the 3rd of April, sorry. 11 o'clock. Um, my mother was like, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. God of nature one. Ne? Go to the bathroom. This is weird. Good time contractions at the fa Hey shit, this thing is actually happening. Ne? So I'm pacing around the house. We're not ready. The bag is not packed. You know, now I'm going through Google. What should I have? Because I wasn't going through the pregnancy conventionally, you know, avoiding certain things really. Which, I can't buy this now. Eh, hey, what not? We'll see. We'll cross the bridge when we get there. And now we start to pack, pack. Your mother, you prepared you on a shame. Uh, and then we call the bay, the bay comes. You come pick me up. I don't know where he got the car. <laughs> but he came with a car, right? Husband material. And now it's getting tougher and tougher and harder and harder and more painful. We get into the car, we're driving there. Like every hump, I feel it. I'm like, take it slow. Like I can feel the pain, right? Whoever has given birth will understand what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's that life and death situation. You're negotiating life with God or whoever you believe in. If you believe in whatever, sometimes you can negotiate with yourself. But me at the time, I was negotiating with God. I was like, no, man, I, maybe this is not worth it. Didn't I take it once? That's how intense the pain is. We get to the hospital, yeah, very calm. Midnight, 2 a.m. So the nurses are very calm, they are sleepy. Oh, 
And me as a disruptor. I ain't a sugar man at images Nizongsa Lisa. And Nizongsa Lisa Manch. Eh? Yeah, like you literally go crazy. And whoever's been through the same shit will, will understand. You go crazy. I was cleaning the hospital, guys. Packing files. But Miss Chiba, eh? Hey, you hey. doesn't care what, you know, shouting at me. And I was like, you don't know what I'm going through here. And there's no epidural, and there's no guess what what. So you're gonna let me go through this, yeah? Because also I can assert myself when I want to. I shall when they do those things. Hey, I'm not even dilated. Is it dilated? You're not dilated. I'm not. No, but you know I can feel my, my pelvic bones opening up. And you been eating like whoever touched me like this. My mom tried to pray for me. She tried to touch my toe, yeah? and I felt like there's a lightning that went through my body, like, ga, 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 ga. don't touch me, leave me alone. I sharp, and then, now I'm dilated, 10 centimeters, what, what, dilated, yeah? and then they take, but now, I have, my water hasn't broken yet, so now they have to pierce themselves. I feel like this baby should have been out already, because I can feel that it's pushing itself out now. I shabu, I go, and I have like two hours of pushing a baby out. I don't think many people will go through that. It was not normal, right? And they keep cutting me. They cut it until they get to my ass. Cut it. <laughs> but it even feels like a relief. That's how intense the pain was. Like, imagine being cut, and you feel like, ooh, that's better. Ooh, that's better. Ooh, that's better. And they get to the ass. Oh, ah. Buzzing. Got it cheap. It's a bang thing. Well, man, I was asking a pulse, ne? Cause he's been pressed on for so long, right? What to ask a pulse? Ah, get him turned as an ayo. In the name of Jesus Christ, you know. And I'm like, yani wala. I'm not even there at that moment. I'm far away, like. I'm accepting my coming into the next life. I'm like, yo, maybe I'll see my grandmother, you know? I'm done with this life thing at that moment. And then they you know they take the baby away. Um, and then like 10 minutes later, they come back with him. And then I meet him for the first time. And it was very beautiful. Fine, I raised the baby. We tried to raise the baby. I'm gonna track back a little bit. In December, I, because now you must think about money, right? How am I gonna raise this child? And I have a drama degree, I completed my thesis under very hard circumstances, but I completed it, and the university, the acknowledge the boutique, the complete the thesis, you know, so I'm like, let me, let me go audition, let me go get a job. I'm still pregnant, so I go for this audition, and saying is jelly, look what this job is mine. Come hell, high water, what, what? I audition and it goes so well. And then I get the job. I get the job. Um, it was for a talk show on SABC One. I get the job. So my agent calls me, you got the job, oh great. And then she calls me like two hours later. She's like, yeah, maybe not. I'm like, why? Because you're pregnant. Because I'm pregnant? Yeah. No, but that's discrimination. Yeah, well, this is South Africa. And then the job goes away. Nah? Now we go back to where I left off before I backtracked. Baby is here, we go home, eh, breastfeeding, all those things, those horrible things. You know, the postnatal depression is weighing heavily on the girl. You know, I want to kill myself and the baby because uh, I can't mother. I can't take care of this human being, you know, and my mother can't mother the both of us as well because also I've been a breadwinner since I was 13. I used to braid people's hair, even in the varsity, I used to braid people's hair to take care of my family and I can't do that because you know? And now there's no source of income at all. And it was tough, right? And the bay, Oh, fairly degree I can. Oh, fairly degree. Oh, 
Ah, 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 and also part of the conditions that we said with carrying the pregnancy was that I didn't agree to being the primary caregiver of the baby. And I made it very clear, Uguti, I'm only gonna keep this baby if I'm not gonna be the primary caregiver of the baby. Like if we go into this, so it too, full force. And I know my mother's gonna have space to allow us to raise the baby together. But obviously, you know, masculinity had other plans. So much as you get that reawakening as well. You know, you're knocked out of your love lives here socks. Nobody back balance it is yeah yeah. How many I did it? How many I did? Fine, we I we try to raise the baby, and the baby is also he gets sick a lot, yeah? And we can't keep on going to public hospitals. When he was seven weeks old, he had um, pneumonia. So that Ramisako Mamilodi Day Hospital, Oof, it was horrible. It was horrible because it looked like they wanted the baby to die. You know, it was it's less work for them if people die. That's that's the situation of our public hospitals now. People go there to die. So that was the situation. And then, because I'm a disruptor, I was like, no, keep your phone. I tell the baby. Keep your phone, let's record the situation. Because now they want, they want him to leave and then one parent must stay behind. That's their policy. That the mother must stay behind and the dad must leave. So we find an opportunity to, you know, mess up the space. And then we make this whole drama, we're recording it. You know, then they want the phone and I slide on my son's back so they can't get it. Because now they're manhandling the both of us. And I'm carrying my son at that moment and he can't breathe. like. And that is trauma that's happening in that time. Like I'm not, I'm not freestyling through those waves. You know, I'm aware of my positionality at the moment and how vulnerable I am at the moment, right? Because also I'm very political, so I, I put on a political lens all the time, a gender lens all the time. Why should I stay behind and he must leave? You know, all those things, and also I don't want to leave because my son is about to die if you guys don't do something about it. You post the video on Facebook, ENCA picks it up, it becomes a whole problem. Can the problem get solved? Now they take the baby seriously. Um, all of that. That's also a money problem, just by the way. Nah? And I'm trying to not make these connotations because of net bank. No. No, no, no. I'm making, I'm telling the story because I understand the importance of being honest in black womanhood because sometimes we, we do it so well that people don't really realize the magnitude of the trauma and violence that we undergo, right? At the hands of structures. And then I get a job. I get a job at this other organization. A, and then I'm writing stuff, I'm writing speeches. Mara e bank balance still. I do mail, innit? And then I'm like, no, but there's another guy who got two other boys who got uh, employed at the same time as I was, and they have the same qualification level, and we're doing the same job. And then I get inside the info that these boys are earning two times more than I am. You know, Parela di Vurpaki puts on Maralevar di Pempas de Atura, Aokonahal. Ne, parele di vurpa. Kiri juan, kuzor tu mile in the same months, we are doing the same job, and I know you poor as fuck, like I am. So where are you getting the money for vurpa? I will give vurpa, guys, give vurpa. And then I found out, you know, my whole more than you. Then I asked for a raise. My friend in Yoko, I remember when we were discussing how I'm gonna ask for a raise. I'm like, no, let me ask him for fifty percent raise. She's like, eh, ask for hundred percent. Ne. And her and Sima were telling me, ask for 100%, ne? but also imposter syndrome, they're back, they're black girls in. Yeah, it's like, hey, hey, 100% is too much. No ways, no ways, get no man, guys. 50% is, yeah, I mean, at least, you know, after three months, get like 20%, and then we'll get to 100% eventually. And they're like, girl, these niggas are earning two times more than you. You still want to negotiate this thing with yourself? Ask for 100%. I need to call your WhatsApp, guys. Erase. 
capillaries, but yeah, how much? It's 100%. And he keeps quiet. And the following morning, he's like, okay, we agree on 50%. Oh, great, nice. But obviously still earning less than the other boys. And then I leave the job because of other politics that came about, um, you know, being policed, expression being policed. We know how it is, you know, like to exist as a black girl in a corporate space, in a political space, in the workspace, you have to silence yourself and your voice on a daily basis to continue existing. And at the space that I was occupying at the time, it was not doable anymore, you know? And so I left the job. I raised the baby with no, with no income. And it's super hard. Whoever has gone through this will, will attest. It's hard, like, flu. you don't have money for the GP, there's no medical aid, all those things. You manage to get 350 to go to the GP, but you still have to buy medicine. You know, it's, it's constantly, it's dehumanizing really, because you have to, you know, ask for mercy from people who help me with this baby, but also they were not there when you were having sex making the baby, so it's complicated, right? And then fine, I get another job, I leave that job as well. You know this thing of being hard-headed is tough, ne? and I'm that person, but now I'm more comfortable in the voice that I have, and I'm willing to fight for it, no matter what, right? And then, fast forward, we are in 2018, my son is two, and mentally, I could write. Um, you know, and it's tricky because, you know, even the issue of mental health is elitist to some extent because mental health issues are not legitimized until a doctor says, yes, you are sick. So if you don't have a doctor to diagnose you, then city, what depression, you know, what medication are you on, you know? So that's that. I know I can't mother this person anymore. And it's also taking a toll on him and his development. He wasn't working until he was two. And I'm still the primary caregiver of my son, right? Like, I will leave home, and then we have to go to the balance, right, in my emotions, and then come back home to this place and it's still the same, like, it's still the same child. It's still the same mother. It's still the same food, no food. It's still the same stresses. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. And I kept on breaking down day after day. And then, and then this one night, I decide I have to give him away. And the dad and I had spoken about this, you know, since since the boy came about who's gonna raise him. And his parents were always available. You know, they live in the rural area in Kuruman. Okay, in the suburb there, but it's still Kuruman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 it's still Kuruman, right? So, I remember that night, I was under so much distress. I had to share the bed with my mom and my son. Because also, Nai, he wasn't okay, right? You know, when you go through shit, the baby also feels it. You know, and it just kept on getting worse. This child is not walking. And he's two. He's not walking. And you know it's because of the fact that you're toxic as fuck. You know, whether you're aware of it or not. You can't, you can't matter this person. And obviously as a feminist raising a boy child, there's other politics as well, right? That arise because you want to teach this, this child an alternative masculinity, which you don't even know how it looks like. You know, I don't know what an alternative masculinity looks like in the text rank. I don't know what it looks like in the classroom. I don't know, like we know we want a different kind of masculinity, but we, we haven't grasped it yet. And now I have to teach it to this child. Eh? 
And then we decide, okay, I decide at 3 a.m. I wake up and I'm like, you can't do this. Take a break from it. I tell my mom, I wake her up. She's obviously against the idea at first. She's like, no, we'll do this. Nani, I raised you, you know, and all of that. But I'm like, eh, eh. I don't want my son to go through the trauma that I went through, you know, of having to plait people's hair at 13 because I have to take care of the family. And, you know, my talent is there, but there's no, you know? So I'm like, you know, I, I can't. I really can't. Mentally, I can't. Physically, I can't. Spiritually, I can't. Emotionally, I can't. Financially, I can't. And then I think two days later, we told the dad. And then he told his parents, who were very happy. Um, and I think a month from then, they came, a kai, Mamilodi. And on that day, because I, I couldn't go through saying goodbye to him when they were there, because it's defeat, you know, it's being conquered. And I'm not party to being conquered, because I've been conquered all my life, you know, and I've always had to fight. So I say goodbye to my son before they come. And I go and I, and I go to the police station outside. And I sit there. And then I wait. They come. My mom is telling me she's WhatsApping me. You know, they're here. Um, and then I have food at my meals. Like, when I got Sunday goes, wait, Mara, I guess. Can I really so? When I got Sunday goes, and I have more, and I don't know what to you know, they're busy calling me. I'm ignoring their calls. The dad is texting me, come say hi to the parents. Zali wants to see you. And I'm like, no, I can't see Zali. I'm working. I have to go do something. Hey, we are shooting something with Nico, what, what? But I'm outside the police station. And, and they take my baby. They take my baby away. And they leave with my baby. They take my baby away and they leave to Kurman. And in a week, they send me a video of him walking. And it's obviously, it's stressful, right? Um, because then again, you get to feel the feeling of being conquered once again couldn't get your baby to walk, you know? And they're taking him to these occupational therapists um, to get him checked out. And also, you don't want to be that person that's like ungrateful, you know, because you know the burden of parenting is yours because you made the baby and you decided to keep it. You could have done an alternative uh, solution to the problem, but you chose to bring this baby. Pamela, but they're doing these things and they're keeping me updated. We video call every now and then. Um, and yeah, that's that's still the situation now. My son is in Kuruman. He's running. And I'm trying to get my paper so I can raise my baby again. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you so much, Naledi.